standing in front of what used to be Twins Restaurant. It was an Ethiopian restaurant. The food was great. You used to eat it with your hands. In uh, December of 1992, I first met Rob and Anthony here where we played music together for the first time. We got paid $5 plus a free meal, and I used to get parking tickets for $20. <laughs> it's called Paying Your Dues. Twenty years ago, we all met through uh, a, a mutual friend, uh, Corey Manders, who was actually a tenor saxophone player. I think he played soprano too. But uh, he's the guy who kind of hired us to play at Twins, and that would have been the first time that this trio plus Corey played together. Uh, a few other gigs happened as a quartet with Corey um, on the span of that that first year, but then it eventually morphed into a trio. And Steve sort of took uh, took the reins and turned it into a piano trio. I uh, I met Anthony, and uh, he gave me this tip to give Corey Manders a call because there was this uh, there's a gig that Corey needed bass players for sometimes. And I was at a funny time, you know, I was on the verge of maybe quitting music and going to be British Columbia and becoming something else. And so I I just happened to call Corey and. Uh, it's true, he needed a bass player, so I, I showed up at Twins and there was uh, Steve Coven on piano and uh, Anthony McKelly on drums and I was playing bass and Corey was playing sax and my life changed because of that, because uh, we, we started, Steve liked the music and, and started uh, a band based on that, that meeting, that chemistry of that time. This is where the trio started playing in the 90s. We had a regular gig here on Thursday nights. It was the beginning to where we are now. In 1993, Steve Coven established the trio. Over the last 20 years, they have released nine CDs, traveled to four continents, and have established themselves as Canadian cultural ambassadors. Their music is played on radio stations around the world, and over a dozen of their compositions have been used in national and international TV and film productions. standing in front of what used to be the top of the Senator, one of Canada's elite jazz venues. My trio played here in the 90s and early 2000s, and we recorded our first CD in 1997 at this location. By 1998, the Steve Coven Trio started establishing themselves on the international stage, performing in such places as Barbados, Jamaica, England, and even Japan. To this day, a large percentage of their record sales still come from Japan. In 2007, the trio's composition, Bogota, was chosen as one of the best new jazz releases in Japan and was released as part of a compilation series called Jazz Bar. In 2006, the trio was invited by the Canadian Embassy in Beijing to tour China. They performed concerts, as well as conducted master classes in Shanghai and Beijing. 
The TRIO's trip to China was made possible uh, through a partnership that uh, I made with the uh, Canadian Embassy. And we'd known that the TRIO had done a lot of work with embassies and consulates and high commissions around the world. And so we were all really excited about the possibility. We brought them to the Shanghai Concert Hall for one performance and uh, with a locally based, a locally based hip hop DJ, scratch DJ producer type, his name was uh, Gary Wong. We set up a workshop in his loft space for um, sort of hip hop aficionados to, to learn a little more about jazz through uh, working with the Steve Coven Trio, which was a lot of fun and I think a different thing for both uh, local audiences for sure, but also for the trio themselves. I think that was a real big eye-opener for, for everybody. In China, jazz is a relatively new phenomenon, even now in 2012, but in, back in 2006, we're talking about the first decade or so of its existence for most people. So the Steve Coven trio winds up being one of the first Canadians that had gone at that point in time. In Beijing, the big concert was at uh, Peking University Hall, which is the 2200-seat theater in the number one university in China. It was the first time I presented a jazz group in there and it was one of the first, if not the first jazz group in there. And I know this because when I suggested to Peking University Hall that they might host a jazz performance, they thought about it for a second and realized, they said, that's the jazz, that has drums in it, right? Because I don't think we can have drums in our theater. And what the Steve Coven Trio proved was that it was perfectly, not just fine to have drums in the theater, it was amazing. It went over very well and we were able, as a result, to do even more concerts um, in Peking University Hall since then. And the audiences went crazy. Uh, I think it was rare for them to see a group of guys having what was obviously a lot of fun performing on a stage versus your traditional sort of recital situation, which is what they would have seen a lot of in that environment. In Shanghai, they did a couple of workshops. One was at the Shanghai Conservatory, which um, really got students thinking in new ways. And you could see the sort of light bulbs going off in their head when Steve used drawings and uh, they didn't really know what was going on at first, but I think uh, by the end of it, they all sort of came around and, and, and learned something new and amazing, and it was definitely a different thing for them. One of the greatest things about touring to new parts of the world is being exposed to new cultures and using this experience to create new compositions. When I first heard Steve play, I realized that I was hearing somebody unlike anyone I'd ever heard. And I'd been hearing jazz pianists and jazz musicians since I was, oh, 11 years old and following them avidly. The interesting thing I realized about Steve when I asked him about his background and his work and how he comes up with what he does is he says, oh, well, I was not originally a jazz pianist. I was an improviser. And that made a lot of sense. In other words, that's where my point about just making music in general with a capital M and not thinking, well, this is modern music, this is classical music, this is impressionism, this is jazz or blues. Uh, there, there are no borderlines. He brings everything to the jazz element when he's playing. not only Steve, there's the trio, which I think is an extension of Steve's philosophy and feeling. I one time said to Rob Clutton, because uh, I, I said, uh, uh, Rob, sometimes Steve just starts something, and you, and you can't tell by what he's doing where he's going. He, he, it, may, it may end up being in, in this tune or that tune. It starts with something abstract. I said, how do you know what to do? He said, oh, I know. He said, I have a feeling and I've worked with Steve enough to know that we feel each other out. And you really get that impression when you're listening to, to that. It's a, a wonderful uh, blend.
Barbados International Jazz Festival was the trio's first international tour back in 1998. Since then, they have returned to Barbados several times, performing in Holder's Season Festival, as well as conducting educational clinics and master classes. Probably one of the most memorable concerts we put on over the last 20 years was when we performed at the University de Nationale in Bogota, Colombia. Due to the heavy traffic, we arrived to the venue a half an hour late, where we were greeted by 4,000 screaming fans chanting, Steve Coven Trio! Steve Coven Trio! Who would have ever thought in Bogota? We were like the Rolling Stones. It was an incredible experience. The building behind me used to be home to the Montreal Bistro, another one of Canada's premier jazz venues. In 2000, my trio recorded Not By The Elbows, our third CD here. The owners, Bridget and Lothar Lang, were great patrons of the jazz community, and this was a very wonderful, magical place to make music. The, uh, that Steve Corvin played first the first time in 1996 and of course again in 1997 as a pre-opening act for the Oscar Peterson trio. If you didn't succeed the first night, you would never come back. And because you played more than two or three or sometimes four times a year there, that means you were okay. Not only okay, you actually graduated from a solo night or from a single night performances to a five-nighter, and very few Torontonian bands or Toronto bands could, could do that one. I'm told that when uh, Igor Stravinsky, the great Russian composer, came to America and he came up to the immigration people and they asked him you know, what he did, what his profession was, and he said, I am an inventor of music. Well, I thought about that when I heard Steve Coven play in his group, and I think that is exactly what, what, uh, what uh, fits him as well. Uh, he creates music on the spot, and that music is memorable. It was really great to have the Steve Coven Trio here twice in the last two years. Uh, they played at the Baja California Jazz Festival at Cervantino, and this year they're going down to the Monterey uh, International Festival at the uh, University of Monterey. Uh, they're great representatives for Canada, laid back, outgoing, if you can have the two together, and uh, you know, great ambassadors for Canada. And you don't have to know anything about jazz to, to enjoy the performance. In 2011, the Steve Coven Trio was invited to represent Canada by Mexico's Cervantino International Festival. 
one of Latin America's largest and most prestigious festivals. They toured nine cities and performed nine concerts throughout Mexico and Baja California. This was the trio's fourth time touring Mexico. Most recently, in October 2012, the trio returned to Mexico, representing Canada in a variety of cultural events, as well as conducting master classes at the University of Monterey. I feel very proud and fortunate to be a Canadian and live in a country which supports artists and the development of culture. Many of the trio's international tours have been made possible through different government funding programs, such as the Canada Council for the Arts and FACTOR. On these international tours, often we are the only Canadian group on the rosters. Along with this comes a certain responsibility and a sense of pride representing our country on international stages. So uh, here we are, you know, is, we are at the end of uh, the trip of uh, Steve Coven and the Steve Coven Trio. Uh, this has been a very successful event and trip, you know, uh, not only here in Monterey, but also in Mexico. Uh, I'm very grateful, you know, that they made the time to come. Uh, this is great, you know, for the relationship that Canada enjoys with uh, Mexico. Uh, we look forward to your next visit. Thanks. Big fan of Steve Coven. You know, you need entertainment with your music. And his band, 20 years of freaking out on stage, doing all kinds of things to a piano that are legal, and not always a good idea for some, but Steve makes it sound just right. Prepared piano from Steve Coven, two thumbs up. One of the most important things to remember about this trio is that we've been all over the place and really there's been no management, there's been no um, publicists involved, there's been nothing other than three people and a great leader. And Steve pretty much uh, put all the tours together and relentlessly worked on putting together CDs and music and uh, and uh, making contacts and over the years. Um, something that has to be said is that uh, he's done a phenomenal job at that. I don't know of too many people that, within my time on the scene playing with various people, I don't know too many people that have done that as successfully as Steve has. So congratulations to Steve. On battery, Anthony McKelly, ladies and gentlemen. Bajo, Rob Clutton. Playing with the trio for a long time, 20 years, gives uh, advantages in the form of uh, a relationship and, and that kind of manifests through the music in uh, experimentation and spontaneity and uh, a certain feeling or, or vibe on stage where there's um, I don't know how to describe it other than it's a feeling between the three of us that's that's really special. Personally, I believe that one of the trio's appealing qualities is that we enjoy being spontaneous and taking chances while we create. Having worked together for two decades, we have developed a real fellowship and trust both on and off the stage.
We have definitely succeeded creating music and at the same time enjoying each other's company. I look forward to working with Rob and Anthony for the next 20 years and continuing our musical journey together. Thank you.